G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we are on the brink of round two of the 2022 season. As you know, if you've been watching my videos, you'd know that I think that uh, round one was a particularly exciting round, but in round two, we may see uh, a particularly historic event taking place, and it's one that I haven't really touched on on the channel yet, so I wanted to correct that right before it potentially happens in round two, and I'm of course referring to Buddy Franklin potentially hitting a 1,000 AFL goals this weekend. The Swans take on the Cats at the SCG this Friday night, I believe, and Buddy Franklin sits four goals shy of hitting a thousand. So we were half expecting it uh, to take place between the Giants and the Swans last Saturday, but watching that game, it appeared evident they were wearing Buddy like an absolute glove. He couldn't get a meter of space, and that's potentially gonna happen again this weekend against the Cats, because no team's gonna wanna be the team that concedes that 1,000th goal. Now, obviously I, I don't go for the Sydney Swans, but part of me is really, really hoping he notches it this weekend in front of his home crowd. And against the Cats as well, that's a big opponent. It's a very big game in the context of the season too. So if you haven't been watching footy for that long, I might just refresh you on Franklin's journey to these 1,000 goals. He was drafted back in 2004 at pick five. Big key forward prospect out of uh, the mighty Perth Demons here in Western Australia. And it was quite obvious from a young age that he had some sort of special talent. Obviously, he went top five in the draft. Obviously, we know these key position types, they uh, in theory take longer to develop, but he played 20 games in his first season, kicking 21 goals. And it was obvious that he just sort of had this ability that other key forwards don't. It would be just his third Third season in 2007, we would truly make his mark on the comp. He get 73 goals that year, including finals and including the match winner in an elimination final to be Adelaide as well. You could argue that was a massive breakout year for him, but his true breakout year would be 2008, where he would famously kick 100 goals in an AFL season. It took until the final game of the year against Carlton, which was an amazing, dramatic finale to the year. Brendan Favola was playing in the same game, and he kicked seven goals himself to be stranded on 99 at the end of the season. To put the achievement of kicking 100 goals in a season into some context since 2009 the highest common medalist winning tally was 82 goals and that's held equally between Lance Franklin himself Josh Kennedy from the Eagles and Brent Favola of Carlton at the end of 2008, Buddy would go on to win his first premiership with the Hawthorne Footy Club before adding a second one in his final year at the club in 2013. He then signed what was a famous contract at the time, nine years as a free agent to join the Sydney Swans. Now the Swans were already a pretty strong team at the time, having won the premiership just 12 months prior, so there was a bit of a belief that this could make Sydney borderline unbeatable. But in his time at the Swans, they haven't claimed that elusive premiership. He's played in two losing grand finals and no flags in his time at that club. That being said, it would be wrong to suggest he hasn't been successful. He kicked 580 goals at the Hawks and he's added a further 416 to date at the Sydney Footy Club. It's hard to believe that now that we are in that final year of that nine year contract. It didn't feel like, at least to me, an old fart. It didn't feel like that contract was so long ago. And there was also a lot of talk at the time that he wouldn't actually last those nine years. But here we are, the ninth and final year of his contract and possibly the final season of his career. So he's got 21 rounds to kick four goals. Now to put the achievement of kicking a thousand goals in an AFL career into some context, it's, it's rare by any standards, let alone modern standards. The last player to do it was Gary Ablett Senior 27 years ago. Only five other players than Gary Ablett Senior have actually achieved it. Gordon Coventry in 1934, Doug Wade 1974, Tony Lockett 1995, and Jason Dunstall also in 1995. So again, it's really not an unreasonable question to ask, you know, the way the game's trending. Will anyone ever kick a thousand goals in an AFL career ever again? You know, there's been sort of testimonials and uh, interviews with uh, some of Buddy Franklin's old teammates, guys like Dunstall and Hodge, who have said that they don't think it will be achieved again, because you have to consider in the modern game, there's such a defensive team-based mindset. These days, the game's played with defensive zones rather than one-on-one, -on -one, which sort of begs the question, imagine what Buddy Franklin would achieve if he only had one opponent at any given time. But it hasn't stopped Buddy, and at times, as Sean Bergwijn points out, you even use Buddy Franklin in the guts or on the wing at times to really extract the most out of his talent because he's one of those rare key forward players and probably the first that I can ever remember who has ever shown an ability to be able to play up the ground and still impact. So this weekend, Buddy Franklin is potentially going to hit a 1,000 goals, and what an amazing achievement it would be. I've got a fun fact for you as well. Of the top 30 goal kickers in AFL history, out of those with more than 600 goals, just two of them are left footers, Lance Franklin and Matthew Lloyd. There was a bit of debate this week as to whether, you know, fans will be able to run onto the ground, such as tradition. We saw it when Buddy Franklin kicked 100 goals in a season back in 2008, but obviously in modern society, it, things are a little bit different now with COVID and the like. That being said, I think everyone unanimously, even Gil McLaughlin basically said that he wouldn't mind seeing fans
fans run onto the game to embrace Buddy Franklin. So much so that I think they're planning a 20 minute break for when he actually hits a thousand goals. <laughs> Another cool thing that has come to my attention is that, uh, you know, the, the beer brand Furphy, who if you're over 18, you probably have heard of. They've actually commissioned the production of 10 glass boot replicas valued at over a thousand dollars each and will be giving AFL diehards the opportunity to win their piece of history. So you can actually win one of these thousand dollar glass replica boots. All you have to do is post a snap or video yourself celebrating the moment Franklin kicks his 1000th goal. Then you got to post it with the hashtag unbuddybelievable. This seems like a, a pretty mad piece of memorabilia. So if you're interested in taking up that opportunity, I think it would be really cool. All you have to do is go to the description of this video and uh, you can find the links for how you can sign up. So if you're interested in this sort of opportunity, by all means head to the description of this video. You can find a link where you can find everything you need to know about this. For me personally, my view on Buddy Franklin has uh, has really changed over the years. Back in the early days, I sort of looked at him as someone I kind of hated because I wanted him to play for the Eagles, but now you just got to sit back and enjoy that we're probably seeing a once in a generation player and that's not putting any mayonnaise on it. But thanks for watching guys. Make sure you check out uh, all the details in the description below. You could win yeah, over a thousand dollars that thing is worth. So pretty bloody cool. Cheers for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.